This morning, the finalists for the Poker Hall of Fame were announced. Ten nominees were announced, and only two at most will be selected and inducted into the Poker Hall of Fame. The criteria for induction are as follows. One, a player must have played poker against acknowledged top competition. Two, player must be a minimum of 40 years old at time of nomination. Three, played for high stakes. Four, played consistently well gaining the respective peers. Five, stood the test of time. And six, for non-players, contributed to the overall growth and success of the game of poker with indelible positive and lasting results. Official ballots will be sent to 51 voters. Those voters are comprised of the 30 member Hall of Famers as well as 21 people from the poker media. The 51 voters have until July 8th to fill out their ballots and return them to the WSOP Governing Council. The Poker Hall of Fame selects one or two players annually. So this year's chosen player or players will be inducted into the Poker Hall of Fame during the WSOP main event final table coverage on July 15th during the ESPN telecast. So without further ado, your nominees for the 2019 Poker Hall of Fame are in alphabetical order. First is Chris Bjorn. Bjorn is a 71 year old Swedish born poker player who has over 5.7 million in career earnings. He won two WSOP gold bracelets. The first came in 1991 when he won the 1500 PLO event. The second came in 2000 when he won the 3K No Limit Hold'em tournament. Second is David Chu. Chu is a five-time WSOP Gold Bracelet winner with wins in Limit Hold'em, Seven Card Stud, and Omaha Eight or Better. On top of his bracelet wins, Chu has caches in 74 WSOP events. Chu's most recent bracelet victory came in 2013 in the 2500 Stud event. That event had an impressive final table where Chu defeated Michael Mizrahi, Frank Casella, and Scott Seaver. Chu also has a World Poker Tour title. He defeated Gus Hansen heads up in the 2008 WPT World Championship. Coming in at number three is Eli Elezra. Elezra is originally from Israel. Elezra now calls Las Vegas home and is a regular at high stakes cash games all around town. Elezra picked up his fourth World Series of Poker bracelet just a few weeks ago in the 1500 seven card stud event. Now, Lezra also has a WPT title. He won the 10K No Limit Hold'em event at the 2004 Mirage Poker Showdown for just over a cool $1 million. Coming in at number four is Antonio Esfandiari. Esfandiari is the only new finalist added to this year's list. Esfandiari's biggest and probably most famous win comes from the WSOP Big One for One Drop $1 million buy-in tournament where he took home $18,346,000. Esfandiari won two other WSOP events, the 2K Pot Limit Hold'em back in 2004 and the 1K No Limit Hold'em event at WSOP Europe back in 2012. Esfandiari also has two World Poker Tour main event titles, LAPC in 2004 and the 2010 Doyle Brunson Five Diamond event. Esfandiari is ninth on the all-time money list with more than $27 million in winnings. And when he's not playing on the poker table, you can see him doing a final table commentary during the WSOP main event. Chris Ferguson comes in at number five, which was surprising given the controversy around Ferguson and his involvement with the now defunct Full Tilt Poker. Jesus Ferguson has been playing poker since 1993. He won the WSOP main event back in 2000 for $1.5 million and then came back to become WSOP Player of the Year 17 years later. Ferguson has 129 career WSOP caches, which trails only Phil Helmuth, who has 144 caches. Coming in at number six is Ted Forrest. Forrest has over six WSOP bracelets. His most recent bracelet came after he defeated Phil Helmuth in the seven card Raz event back in 2014. Now Forrest splashed into the poker world back in 1993, where he won three bracelets in three consecutive events. Something that was unheard of even when the fields were smaller 26 years ago. He won the 5K Limit 7th Card Stud event, then won the 1500 Limit Raz the next day, and then won the 1500 Omaha High Low event the day after that. Three bracelets in three days in three different poker variants. 
On top of that, Forrest also won the World Poker Tour Bay 101 Shooting Stars event back in 2007. Coming in at number seven is Mike Matisau. The mouth would certainly be the first to tell you all about his poker accomplishments. The 51-year-old has four WSOP bracelets. His first bracelet came from winning the 3500 No Limit event back in 1999. His next one came in 2002 when he won the 5K Omaha High Low Limit event. His third came from winning the 2008 5K No Limit Deuce to Seven Low Ball Draw. And lastly, his 2013 win in the 5K Seven Card Stud High Low Eight or Better event. That's four bracelets in four different poker variants. Matisau has also final tabled the WSOP main event twice, but has never managed to take it down. Coming in at number eight, Chris Moneymaker. Moneymaker is the poker fairy tale come true. Back in 2003, Moneymaker satellited into the World Series of Poker main event for $39 and turned that into winning the most prestigious poker tournament in the world for $2.5 million. Now, I'm sure I'm not the only one who watched Moneymaker back in 2003 and got the poker bug. I watched him beat the pros at their own game, and it made me think, huh, if he can do it, maybe I can too. His victory certainly changed the course of poker history, and he's been a friendly ambassador for the game ever since. Coming in at number nine is David Oppenheim. Oppenheim is a cash game legend. He lives in LA and is one of the most feared players in the world. He plays all the mixed games at the absolute highest level, and while he isn't a consistent presence in the poker tournament world, he does have a few impressive career runs, including a third place finish in the 2010 WSOP Poker Players Championship for $603,348. Last but not least, at number 10 is Huckleberry Seed. Huck Seed has won four WSOP bracelets. His first bracelet came from winning the 2500 Pot Limit Omaha event back in 1994. Just two years later, in 1996, Seed went on to win the biggest one of them all, the WSOP main event. His other two bracelets came from winning the 1500 Limit Raz event in 2000 and then the higher buy-in 5K Limit Raz event in 2003. Seed also won the WSOP Tournament of Champions back in 2010, as well as the 2009 NBC Heads Up Championship. RIP to that event. Well, who do you think is going to make it out of that list of 10? My vote's going to be on Moneymaker, since, I mean, he really did the most to bring poker to the mainstream. It's amazing that the first year ESPN showed whole cards was the same year a nice guy from Tennessee turned $39 into $2.5 million and, oh yeah, just happened to have the last name Moneymaker. So let me know in the comments below who you think should be chosen for the 2019 Poker Hall of Fame, as well as any players or poker industry professionals you think were left off of this year's list.